Hello everyone, this is Dr. E and for today, pag-usapan naman natin ang triangles sa geometry. Triangle na siguro ang isa sa pinaka-popular na polygon sa geometry at marami tayong mga theorems, postulates, mga properties at mga pamamaraan na kung saan gamit na gamit ang triangle. And for today, yan yung gagawin natin sa ngayon. At ang una natin gagawin ay syempre ang pag-identify ng mga terms na ginagamit natin sa triangles. Una na dyan, yung tinatawag natin mga interior angles. At dito sa ating figure na makikita ninyo, meron tayong triangle na may extended sides at mapapansin ninyo na yung ating mga angles A, B, and C, yung kanyang opposite would be 1, 2, and 3. And those angles are what we call as vertical angles, which means yung angle A ay congruent kay 1, ang 2 ay kay B, at C3 ay kay C. So itong mga interior angles na yan, yung 1, 2, and 3 natin, yan yung ating mga tinatawag na interior or nasa loob ng ating triangles. At alam natin na yung uh, mga terms at um, geometry ay napakahalaga dahil kadalasan sa mga problems na na-encounter natin, may mga words tayo na medyo nakakalituhan tayo pero kung alam natin yung tinutukoy ng mga words na yon mas madali natin maiintindihan ang pag-aaral ng job. Tulad ng mga interior angles na kung saan meron tayong tatlo, syempre dahil ito ay triangle, na measurement of angle 1, 2, and 3. So, kung meron tayong mga interior angles tulad ng angle 1, 2, and 3, meron din syempre tayong tinatawag na exterior angles. At ang exterior angles, by definition, the angles that are adjacent or katabi to the interior angles are the exterior angles of the triangle. Now, ang tanong ko naman sa inyo, ilang exterior angles do you think can you find doon sa ating original figure na nandito sa ating uh, slide sa ngayon? So, kung ito yung ating triangle, meron tayong makikitang 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 other exterior angles other than, of course, yung mga opposite angles ng ating mga interior angles. So, yan ang tinatawag natin mga exterior angles. At yung mga exterior angles na yan ay pwede pa natin masimplify dahil kung mapapansin ninyo, si 4 and 5, si 9 and 8, at si 6 and 7 ay may relationship sa ating uh, geometric figure at alam na alam ko na alam na alam nyo kung ano yun at yun yung vertical angles. So, what happen is pwede natin siyang simplify at instead of naming or writing out yung ating mga values doon sa ating opposite angles ng 4, 8, and 6, ito na lang yung matitira doon sa ating mga exterior angles. So ito mga exterior angles na yan, there are two exterior angles associated with each interior angle, but since these two exterior angles are congruent, because they are vertical, we usually show only one exterior angle with each interior angle. Kaya, sa mundo ng mathematics, it's always simplifying our figures, our calculations, our computations, and to simplify yung ating exterior angles, pwede na natin i-just justify yung angle 4, 6, and 8 dahil kaparehas lang siya ng ating mga vertical angles. So itong si 6, si 4, at si 8, yan yung tinatawag nating mga exterior angles ng ating triangle. So yan yung mga differences ng interior and exterior angles. So just make sure na nauunawaan ninyo yung mga angle measurement na yan dahil marami tayong properties na naguugnay dyan sa mga type of angles na yan, specifically sa triangles. At meron tayong tinatawag na triangle angle sum theorem at ang ibig sabihin lang nito kapag inad natin yung mga angle measurement ni angle 1, 2, and 3 ito ay mag equal to 180 degrees. At dun sa previous lesson natin napakita na natin itong popular na theorem na ito na kung saan it helps us solve for some of the missing sides of not just triangles but also polygons in the process. So, tandaan nyo lang na lahat ng corners ng ating triangle, ke anumang type ng triangle yan, sum niya would equal to 180 degrees tulad nitong theorem 
Nakadala sa natin na babanggit sa ating mga lessons sa geometry. Kaya, kung meron tayong triangle angle sum theorem at alam natin kung paano siya gamitin, we'd be able to... May tumatawag sa akin, kaya... <laughs> I-decline muna natin at pagpatuloy natin itong ating lesson for today dahil magkukumpute tayo ngayon ng angle measurement nitong special triangle na ito. So using the triangle angle sum theorem, how are we going to find the measure of each angle knowing na ang ating sum ng interior angles natin ay 180. At tulad na nga nang nabanggit ko sa inyo, every time we're looking for x in geometry and we're given a figure, Asahan nyo na na kailangan nyo mag-formulate ng equation. So, it's a combination of our skill in algebra and geometry to be able to answer problems like this. So, ang algebra dyan is yung pag-formulate ng equation. At paano natin i-formulate yung equation? Since meron tayong triangle, ibig sabihin yan yung measurement ng angle 1, measurement ng angle 2, at measurement ng angle 3 will equal 280 degrees. At ano ba yung measurement ng mga angles na yan? Meron tayong tatlo. So kahit alin dyan, pwede natin i-identify as 1, 2, or 3. Pero para mas klaro, gawin natin to si 1, ito si 2, at ito si 3. So sino si angle 1? Si angle 1 ay si 5x degrees. Angle 2 is si 6x degrees. At si angle 3 would be 15x plus 24 equal 280 degrees. And now that we have our equation, hindi nyo nakikita si 180 degrees, but we know that if we combine like terms, yang mga yan, it will equal to 26x plus 24 equals 180. At lahat yan ay in degree measure. And to further simplify our algebraic equation, we subtract 24 on both sides leaving us with 26x equal to 180 minus 24 is 156. And if we divide both sides by 26, x is equal to 6, which means yung ating mga x values will be 6 degrees. And when this happens, pwede na natin makuha yung actual measurement ni 1, ni 2, and ni 3 by plugging in the value of 6 to our algebraic expressions. At ano ba yung mga yan? So since nakuha na natin si x using algebra, and again, sa pag-answer ng mga problems tulad nito, lagi nyong tatandaan na napakahalaga ng algebra in integrating that scale para makakuha tayo ng sagot tulad ng problem na ito. So ang x na nakuha natin is equal to 6, and now that we're able to produce that, alam na natin yung measurement ni 1, which is 30 degrees, measurement ni 2, which is 36 degrees, at measurement ng ating last corner is 114 degrees. And with this, if you want to check if your answer is correct, dapat syempre pag in natin si 30, 36, at 114, mag -e equal sa 180 degrees, which is the case in our problem. And this is how we answer problems using our theorems in triangle and our scale in algebra to produce an equation to solve for the value of x. Now, let's identify the different types of our triangles according to its sides. Alam natin ang scaling, isosceles, at equilateral. At yung mga yan, yan yung mga types of triangles natin na kung saan yung una, scaling, magkakaiba yung sukat ng ating mga sides. Isosceles, dalawang sides, ay congruent at equilateral, which means all the three sides of our triangle are congruent. Now, ang gagawin naman natin ngayon, is how to construct these types of triangles using our compass. So alam natin na ang compass ay isa sa mga tool na ginagamit natin sa pag-measure at pag-sukat. Parang tinagalog ka lang yung measure at sukat. Pero mapapakita ko sa inyo kung paano tayo makakabuo ng equilateral, scaling, at saka isosceles triangle gamit ang ating compass at straight edge. So, ang una natin gagawin is to produce a circle. Yes, circle. And how are we going to do that? By using a straight edge, drawing a straight line. At kuha lang tayo ng middle. Let's say ito yung ating middle. At from our 
compass, pwede natin siyang palakihin or palaitin, depende sa size. So what we're going to do is to secure our compass. Let's say ito yung width na gusto ko. Yung needle natin, ilagay natin sa gitna so that it will create a perfect circle. At kung mag Kung nagtataka kayo kung bakit may circle sa triangle, makikita niya kung bakit. So, without moving your compass, so it's important na hindi nyo imove yung inyong compass kasi ang una natin ipoproduce ay yung ating equilateral triangle. So, ang gagawin natin is gamit ang parehas na width ng ating compass, ilagay natin sa isa sa mga dulong diameter yung ating um, needle and... Gawa lang tayo ng curve and you will notice na yung curve natin nag-pass through the center or our radius and when this happens, now we're able to produce three points on our circle, A, B, and C and using these points, if we connect these points, we'll be able to produce an equilateral angle. So ito yung ating Extended line, extended line, extended line, and now, meron na tayong equilateral triangle. So, alam natin na ang ating mga triangles dito kapag hinahilight natin yan. So, let's use this and make it a little bit visible. So, ito na yung ating equilateral triangle. So, without using yung measurement ng ating triangle, nakaproduce na tayo ng equilateral triangle, which means ito, ito, at ito ay magkakaparehas ng sukat. Ito, ito, ito ay magkakasukat rin. So, ito ang tinatawag nating equilateral. And at the same time, equiangular. Triangle. At meron pang special name ito sa polygon dahil ang triangle ang ating smallest or the least number of sides na polygon. Ito rin ay tinatawag natin regular polygon dahil siya ay both equilateral at equiangular. So yan yung paggamit natin ng compass. Para makabuo ng equilateral triangle, paano naman yung ating isosceles triangle? Mas madali ang isosceles triangle dahil pwede tayong gumawa ng circle or not. It's up to you. So ito yung ating line. So all you need to do is to just pick a point, point A and point B. So ito yung ating first side ng ating triangle, so yung base ng ating triangle. And to create an isosceles triangle, all we need to do is to use our compass at uh, without changing, or sige, kung gusto nyo i-change, pwede nyo palakihin or paliitin. At uh, using the needle, pointing it to point A or point B and creating a curve like so. And then, i-point nyo yung inyong needles of B and magkakaroon siya ng point of intersection. At with that, pwede na tayo makabuo ng isosceles triangle because now we're able to produce point C na kung saan kapag kinunek natin si point B kay C at si point C kay A, nakabuo na tayo ng isosceles triangle gamit ang ating Compass. Now, paano tayo magpo-produce ng scalene? Mas madali, or madali rin naman ng scalene. So, if you want, we'll still use A and B. So, all we need to do is just to... Gamit na lang tayo ng panibagong papel. So, all we need to do is to start off with a straight line. And then, ito si A, ito si B. And uh, ang sukat ni A at B ay dapat hindi magkakaparehas dahil siya ay scaling. So, ito yung magkaparehas na sukat. So, what you can do to avoid na magkaparehas ng sukat si A and B, sukatin nyo si A and B, and then palakihin nyo or paliitin. Gusto kong paliitin muna. Paliitin yung ating width. So, now that it's a little bit smaller, 
So, hindi na siya magkasukat. So, just point it to B or point it to A. It doesn't matter. I'll point it here and then create a curve. Making sure na secure ang ating point right here. And then, after that, i-change nyo uli yung inyong compass. Make it wider. And point it to A. At yung point of intersection niya, mapapansin nyo magkaiba yung sukat nitong A and B natin. So, safe pa rin tayo na scaling, na, scaling yan. So, by connecting our dots kay point M na naproduce natin sa ating curves, meron na tayong scaling triangle. So, this is now our scaling triangle. Dahil, magkakaiba yung sukat ng ating mga sides gamit ang ating triangle. So, sa ating mga triangles na ito, 1, 2, and 3, isa lang yung regular polygon dahil ang regular polygon, their sides needs to be congruent and their angles should also be congruent. And we're able to produce that using our compass, our pencil, and our straight edge. At yan, yung lesson natin on triangles, so, aside from the theorems, formulas that we'll we're able to produce or we're able to learn in solving triangles, meron pa tayong uh, mga topics na pwedeng matutunan tulad ng lesson natin for today. Kaya, ang number bender challenge natin, after creating our scaling isosceles and equilateral triangle, ay pag-measure naman ng angle with four sides, at hanapin ninyo ang measurement ni angle C given yung ating mga information na yan. And if you know yung interior angles or sum ng interior angles ng polygon na yan, you'll be able to solve this number bender challenge for today. So comment it down below and let's see kung kaya nyo sagutan at mahanap ang measurement ni angle C. At yan! ang lesson natin for today on geometry. So, understand that we're not only learning formulas in mathematics, specifically in geometry. Sometimes, we also need to learn how to use measurement or measuring tools to be able to construct our polygons tulad ng ginawa natin today. Dr. E, and see you again next time.